just finished the first season of Netflix's Ginny and Georgia. Feeling a little breathless at the sheer number of storylines that reached a climax or left us on a tantalizing cliffhanger in the space of an hour? Well, join the club. Let's call this club, I don't know, the place where we talk at length about what the hell just happened? From Ginny and Austin driving off into the night to Georgia, becoming Walsbury's first lady-to-be and simultaneously a two-time murder suspect, the show ends with a dizzying array of events. Scatter the ashes of the past. Overall, Ginny and Georgia have received mixed reviews. Praise for its handling of race and teenage dynamics, Criticism over its multiple storylines which intersect and overlap in often confusing ways. One thing's for sure, everyone's obsessed with the newcomers that play the show's teenage cast, from Antonia Gentry as Ginny, to Sarah Wayesglass as Max, and Mason Temple as Hunter. So let's dive into how things wrapped up and where we stand going into a potential season 2, shall we? Turns out Ginny's not the person we all thought she was. She's got secrets. I don't know how I expected this show to end, but Ginny and Austin driving off into the night on a motorcycle was not it. It makes sense that Ginny would want to cut ties with her mom, having found out that Georgia has murdered at least one person. Fairly justifiably, one might argue, but that's a different conversation. I think your mom is dangerous. Dangerous? I think she murdered Kenny Drexel. What? But, I mean, where do a 16-year-old and her 9-year-old brother go? Austin is very much a minor and George is clearly his sole parent, so isn't that, um, kidnapping? My best guess is that they're going to try and stay with Zion. I know what I have to do. I have to do what she's always taught me. I have to keep running. Ginny idolizes her dad, and Zion and Austin seem close as well, but Georgia clearly has primary custody of them both, and Ginny must know that if she goes to Zion's, that's the first place Georgia will look. Also, Ginny speaks in the final voiceover about going on the run, just like Georgia did, and going to her dad's is not going on the run. I know the heart of this series is meant to be the relationship between Ginny and Georgia, but I found the Mang dynamic by far the most tender. It was devastating to see the breakdown of the Mang in the aftermath of Max finding out that Ginny had sex with Marcus. It seems like not only Ginny is now estranged from the group, but Abby is too. And Abby is going through enough, people. You're throwing all that away for, for this, this guy. Cool. The season ends with Max and Nora distancing themselves from Abby and Ginny, even though the four of them need each other more than ever in the light of the Sophie-Max breakup and Abby's parents' divorce. In case you can't tell, I am very invested in Mang. I have had it with both of you, and I want to know what is going on right now. Oh, Mom, I don't know boundaries. We know that Georgia has killed at least two people. Her first husband, who she was forced to marry to regain custody of Ginny, and Kenny, her second husband who was inappropriately touching Ginny, and possibly worse. <coughs> the first season ends with Georgia becoming the to-be first lady of Wellsbury and the extremely hot private investigator Cordova, revealing to Ginny that he knows Georgia killed Kenny, not to mention personally exhumed Kenny's body to cover it up. Are you telling me you think your mom isn't capable of something like that? Of course she's not. But it seems like there's a good chance Cordova can't prove it. For one thing, Ginny and Austin burned the plant that would have served as evidence. I can't imagine you should burn fatally poisonous plants, but I digress. Torture. Second, Georgia somehow manages to put what's left of Kenny's remains into, um, the fireworks that celebrate Paul's re-election as mayor, or at least that's what she tells Cordova. So there isn't any evidence to be found there either. What'd you do with that body, Georgia? Hmm? I know you're responsible for digging it up. Thank you, I could not have done it without you! This is a season 2 setup if I ever saw one. 
When Austin finds out that he's been writing letters to his mom all along, thinking that he was writing to his father in Azkaban, Ginny loses it and mails all the letters to Austin's actual dad, who is in prison by the way, serving time for crimes that it's hinted that Georgia committed. This is bullshit. Georgia may be able to keep Zion from me, but I won't let her keep Gil from you. When Ginny tells Georgia that she mailed Austin's letters, the dramatic music plays, and Georgia looks horrified. Did you put our return address on? She asks in horror. My guess? Austin's dad is close to getting out of prison, and in season 2 he'll come back for his son and punish Georgia for making him pay for her crime. You know who I am, Mom. I'm you. Remember? The first season ends with Ginny and Marcus in a weird spot. They've said I love you to each other, Marcus has recovered from his motorcycle accident, and Ginny and Hunter are no more. Marcus, it's fine. Okay? We're all good. Let's just talk about this later. On the other hand, Marcus royally messed things up by telling Max that his relationship with Ginny was no big deal. Though, I get where he was coming from. Who expects to be confronted on their way to the bathroom at your sister's musical? And Hunter has a point in that final scene in the hallway when he tells Ginny that he treated her the way she deserves, tap dancing and all, and smirks at the idea that Marcus could give her the same. Marcus, after all, doesn't do relationships. If Ginny stays in Wellsbury, you'd assume that she and Marcus will work things out in season 2, but if she does leave Wellsbury to go live with Zion, then maybe not. God, you're such a piece of shit. I may be a piece of shit, but Ginny is a way better friend than you realize for letting you run around like an entitled brat all the time. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notifications about our latest videos. As I said, there's a lot going on in the final. We learn that Cynthia is caring for her disabled husband. Ellen and Georgia have a blowout fight that ends with Ellen calling Georgia a bad mom. And Joe finally realizes that he actually met Georgia when they were kids, and that he isn't imagining their connection. He wants to tell her he loves her too, which makes three love interests for Georgia, but he holds back. Because you know, she's marrying the mayor. And he doesn't even know yet that she's under suspicion for murder. Oh my god, way to go Paul! Right? <laughs> But Ginny and Georgia has made no secret of its spiritual sister show, Gilmore Girls, and we can assume that Luke and Joe are one and the same, grumpy, hot, and often clad in plaid. And, well, we all know how that turned out. When I was in fifth grade, I told everybody that Eric Estrada was my boyfriend and that we used to make out on his motorcycle. Shh. Not much about the future of Ginny and Georgia has been revealed, but if the show does come back for a second season, we can likely expect Georgia heading out to find out where Ginny and Austin went. Meanwhile, Marcus will definitely be wondering if he had anything to do with Ginny leaving. Mang will also have to pick up the pieces after their big fight, while Max comes to terms with what happened between Ginny and Marcus. Also, with the new info that Cordova received, it's clear he's not done going after Georgia just yet. Phew! Okay, well thanks for joining my club. Here's hoping that season 2 comes soon, because I need more of all of this, even though there's a lot of it. I hope you enjoyed this video, check out this other recent clip from our channel, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.